we're here to talk about uh, a movie that you turned me on to. Um, <laughs> and You're welcome. I, I look. I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for introducing me to Werewolf Ninja Philosopher. Okay. Uh, it is the indiest of indie films. <laughs> Very is, much so. Yes, and is premiering at uh, at Facet Cinematheque. Uh, in Chicago uh, next weekend. It's going to be July 19th through the 21st. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, directed and written by Sujewa uh, Ekenayake. And I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. That's a, um, it's a good attempt. Very good. Okay. Um, and I don't know exactly the best way to describe <laughs> this movie, except it is like, I would say, a jazz movie first. <laughs> Um, and a movie about philosophy and a detective story and a comedy, possibly in that order. Um, and it's probably not the easiest film to absorb uh, as far as like a mainstream moviegoer. And I would dare say even an art house uh, moviegoer. This it's a very kind of a Warholian uh, experiment in filmmaking. Now I've never seen any of uh, Sujewa's other uh, films. This is sort of my introduction. But uh, from what I've seen. I'm a big fan, even though a lot of it challenged me. Uh, it is about a character uh, who is a <laughs> werewolf <laughs> or, <laughs> and, yeah. a, and a ninja and a philosopher, and that is his name. Uh, there are several werewolves uh, in existence in this reality, but uh, he is the only one who is uh, not underground. In fact, he's the only one that we see uh, in this film. And he's also... Uh, not a detective, but he sort of helps the New York <laughs> Police Department. They're sort of or, or, special weird crimes unit. Or at least one New York detective who is, we never see her actually doing her job, just using the phone a lot. Well, to talk about llamas, yes. Um, or one particular <laughs> llama. I, you know, it, the first scene we see her in, she's interviewing uh, Werewolf Ninja Philosopher, uh, played by uh, Art Shrewen, uh Sorry, Shrian Tawari, um, and she's going over this case of uh, someone is murdering independent filmmakers uh, in <laughs> New York City, and she doesn't exactly know why, but she needs his help <laughs> because the, uh, the there's nothing spectacular uh, or supernatural or odd about the the murders themselves, except that they are just all indie filmmakers. Um, and so uh, Werewolf Ninja Philosopher is on the case. Uh, intermittently, yes. he's uh, recording thoughts about philosophy uh, into his iPhone. Uh, <laughs> he's sort of not really maybe reconciling with uh, his uh, ex-girlfriend. Um, and he's also interviewing uh, a film critic uh, who, you know, it's, it's Roger Ebert's Law of the Economy of Characters, really. This movie is so sparse that the the killer of the film is either not going to exist um, or it's going to be one of the people that we meet who is not the werewolf ninja philosopher. Right, right. I mean, it would have been very interesting if it wasn't a werewolf ninja philosopher. It would be interesting if they actually gave him a name instead of werewolf ninja philosopher. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's it's a mouthful. Um, yeah, it, it's funny. It is a movie that's kind of hard to describe. Um, typically... <laughs> um, I, I would look at a movie like this and look at the title and think, okay, decide what you want to be. You're going to be a werewolf. You're going to be a ninja. You're going to be a philosopher. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what to think when you're combining all three into one person. Um, but as you said, it, it's hard to describe, but in the email I received from the director, I mean, it, he described it as werewolf is an unusual movie. He also describes it as a comedy so right there we know that the director knows what this is you know mm -hmm. um he's he wrote it he directed it edited it, shot it um so he's he describes it as an unusual movie ideal for fans of you know jim jarmusch early jim jarmusch uh, stranger than paradise down by law and slow cinema movies art experimental underground movies there are long segments of werewolf walking around New York City at night and working slash thinking. Those segments play a role in the plot, maybe. Uh, and Act 3, the final 20 minutes or so of the movie, is structured in a more mainstream film kind of way. So I think initially I I appreciated and, and 
you know respected the uh, the, the 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 very indie approach to this uh, story. Um, I I guess I had to really get on board with the, the whole you know, walking around late at you know at night. And the movie, the whole movie is shot in black and white, so it those night scenes and walking around are are you know, nicely done as far as, you know, visually, I think that they're um, interesting. I just feel like it gets a bit too repetitive for me. And I wanted to know more about this character. And I wanted to know more about um, even the fact that, okay, we see him, you know, like, like you said, involved in some detective work. I guess I wanted to know how did that come about, you know, and obviously there's a history there. Um, I guess, um, but he takes on these cases, and then he kind of, like you said, philosophizes. We find him philosophizing about the cases and also about life. And um, yeah, I, I guess I wanted to spend less time watching him walk around and more time getting to know him a little bit more. And I think that's that's totally fair, and I get that. And I'm going to confess to something right now, which is. Uh, because I saw this movie via a screener link, right. one of the dangers of that is the temptation, especially when it's late and you're under the constraints of time, mm -hmm. is to press that forward arrow. <laughs> I, yeah. once I Once I got what the movie was saying and doing with these walking sequences, I forward arrowed is that even right? A lot. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where I took a good several, several minutes off the runtime. Um, now, granted, a lot of these scenes are punctuated with even like quick little inserts of, say, the detective talking about her neighbor's missing llama and, and that kind of a thing. And then we go yeah. back to the, the jazz and, and him walking around. Um, and I'm going to watch the movie again straight through okay. uh, because I think that's that's part of the uh, that's part of the journey is, is is watching the entire thing you know as it was meant to be seen, I guess. Yeah. But, there was also a part of me, and I could be totally off base here, but I felt like I was being asked to participate in this movie and to think about it on my own terms because it mm. is not it is a very independent film. It almost feels like it doesn't care at some points. Like the titles are this garish red that are kind of thrown <laughs> up there that they just don't belong. Uh, there are these long sequences. They could very well be the same shot, you know, played over the same music mm -hmm. inserted throughout the movie. You'd almost never know unless you were very careful about it. So I feel like it was almost like an invitation for me to say, okay, what is this entire thing about? Get a sense yeah. of it and then go back and revisit it and examine it like you would with a, with a piece of art. You know, you go up to something in a museum, you walk by and say, oh, yeah, that's cool. I kind of took it in. But then you can go back to it later after you learn more about it or if you just feel like, oh, maybe I didn't give that a fair chance. And then you can really you could stand in front of it for an hour and absorb you know, more of the details. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I, I think what really makes this movie stand out is the, the performance by uh, Art Shrian Tawari as the werewolf ninja philosopher, because I thought his character was so cool. When we first see him and it's like coming up on him on the street and we see he's got the fake werewolf ears and these weird sideburns mm -hmm. and he's got the painted nose, kind of like the old, you know, universal monster, uh, right. kind of a getup. You're like, OK, I get it. It's a, it's a big joke. But he's a real character who's got real soul and he really thinks about things. And it's not just him spitting out, you know, cereal box philosophy a lot of the stuff he's talking about, you're like, wow, you know, what is the, I, note to self, look up the, the history of societies who have critics and how they think about them and, and art critics in particular, and what was the first art critic killing and, you know, throughout time, that kind of a thing. It's, there are layers to this story that a regular audience would never even think to go places. Right. Uh, but I think that's sort of the whole point of philosophy is taking the real world and peeling back the layers of that giant weird onion skin to get to the root of why things happen the way they do. Um, and I was thinking throughout this, that this would work really well as a series of web shorts. Um, yeah. you, could take Werewolf, you could take Werewolf Ninja Philosopher strip out all of the walking and a lot of the extraneous stuff and make a nice tight little web movie. But because it's an hour and you know 12 minutes long or something, 
you almost really have to sit with it. And it's, it's sort of like when I described it as jazz foremost, I feel like I went to a club and I sat down, there was jazz music playing and every once in a while, someone comes out into the spotlight and reads a poem or tells a joke and then right. fades off into the spotlight. And then the jazz music continues. And then for the next hour, that's all these like little interstitials. And even though I did fast forward through it, but that was for other reasons. Uh, it wasn't cause I didn't appreciate what he was doing. I thought right. it was really cool. And it's no, a different it, yeah. way for me to absorb movies. Yeah. I, I could, well, while I'm not totally sure how I, you know, essentially feel about it, but I, I can, totally tell that you know it does feel like this kind of musical piece and um with a story kind of coming in bits and pieces and in in waves um i i just for for me and in i guess my taste because i was so curious and interested in this character um i kept on as i was watching this you know he gives you a lot of time to think about it because most of the time we're just following him walk around. So I started thinking about this, this character and I thought, how interesting would it be if this main character believed he was a werewolf, but he had no makeup, you know, he had no, he had no prosthetic ears or whatever, you know, and, and he was just convinced he was a werewolf and, and everybody's like, Oh, there's this neighborhood werewolf. And this, you know, he's don't, don't get him talking. Cause he's going to talk about all this philosophy and, uh, he's, he's also he's also a you know an accomplished ninja apparently you know and you know he has his friends that you know rely on him for helping solve cases but I would I think I would kind of find it a little bit more interesting and I, I would get kind of a little bit more on board if he was I don't know if, if his outward appearance was almost blending in with everybody else, but like to himself, he, he saw himself as being apart from everybody, not being human. We, we hear him talk about how he's, he's not human. He's, he's werewolf and there's the benefits of being werewolf. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to go into like what, what happens with him in the last 20 minutes. Cause um to me, it's funny because to me, the last 20 minutes was kind of, I guess, built up to actually like uh, culminate in something. But it, to me, it, it didn't really pay off really that well just because it, it, it hits, um, it does kind of sum up the, the story and it, the case is essentially solved. Um, but I think there is even even the way um, the, the movie is or the, the way the marketing is is talking about the last like 20 minutes of the movie is supposed to be like something kind of different. Um, it, it really wasn't necessarily different for me. It just kind of I felt like now we're finally going to like kind of wrap up the, the story here. Um, there's some funny you know, absurd comedic moments, which is, which is fun. But, uh, ultimately, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't end for me on like a, a sad, necessarily a satisfying note. But. I, and I understand that. And I don't, I haven't like read or heard the hype about the last 20 minutes. It's still mm -hmm. kind of puzzling that that would, I think it's, maybe it's notable compared to the rest of the movie because that's when the most stuff <laughs> happens and it's True, the most yeah, narratively yeah. straightforward. Yeah. But I, I loved the ending because even though, like we talked about the law of the economy of characters, it's not a surprise yeah. who is knocking off these uh, independent uh, filmmakers. But I did love what um, the uh, the director was trying to say about film criticism. It's a little bit beyond the easy knocks of, uh, you know, the, what people think of independent uh, filmmaking and uh, and the opinions that go back and forth in terms of that entire, uh, say, critical environment uh, of artists and the people that they make movies for and the people who observe them making movies. Um, I'm trying not to get too spoilerish here. Uh, right. But I, as far as closure, yeah, it didn't feel like the movie had wrapped up in terms of there being this great story arc from start to finish. But that goes back to my own personal feeling of wanting to see more of this in sort of an episodic 
uh, kind of a, a format. And if you stayed through the end credits, I don't know if you did. <laughs> I did, yeah. Um, we're going to get okay, another one. But yeah, we're, we're going to see there's going to be another, uh, there's another film in the works, which I thought was perfect because I'm like, okay, I'm not done with this character. I don't feel like the filmmaker is uh, either. This felt like a case file uh, in the middle of the career of this guy who's had a very interesting life. We don't get a lot, you know, we don't get his origin story, but he is very clearly a werewolf. Everybody around him accepts that he's a werewolf, but they don't treat him differently. He's sort of like a celebrity who blew up, but then like 20 years later, he can just walk down the street. And he's like, oh, here's that, there's that guy who was on that TV show I kind of used to watch. They're not going to bug him for autographs or freak right. out at him. Um, so he's just allowed to do his business, but he still has to earn a living. And he's also got these kind of weird talents he like to indulge. So that's what that's what I really dug about the movie. It's non-traditional in its delivery, but it's also non-traditional in what it gives us as far as his character. And it left me really wanting more. Yeah. No, I mean I'm I'm interested to see I'm interested to see where else he would go with this character. Um I'm you know, I'm hoping we do learn more about him. Um maybe different cases uh would bring out you know, different sides and to reveal more about the character. Um, it ironically was so odd about the fact that we were talking about this tonight is um, on, my way, on my way home, I was, you know, I think it was either on my way home or I was going to, I think it was yesterday. I was going somewhere. Yeah, it was yesterday. I was going somewhere. I was coming up the subway stairs and I wound up walking directly behind a guy who had, literally werewolf ears on like no like, i'm serious like the character <laughs> like the character in this movie and i'm like what is happening to my life you know <laughs> I, was, I was like I, and it would have been awesome if it was like a if he would have been wearing like a werewolf ninja philosopher t-shirt like marketing for the movie you know that would have been like perfect <laughs> um but uh yeah that was a little i'm like okay i guess this isn't too out of the ordinary this like you said this is a character who feels totally comfortable, you know, walking around as is, as a werewolf. And maybe that's not such an, you know, out of place thing. Here's a guy walking upstairs in this, this, up the stairs of a subway and he's perfectly fine wearing these werewolf type Spock ears. Um, you know, Hey, it's, it's New York or Hey, it's Chicago. You know, what do you expect? Yeah, and wh- one thing I did pick up on, you know, because I didn't fast forward through all of the walking scenes. It was just, yeah. you know, it was a handful of them. Uh, but I did like the look on uh, on uh, Passer, Passer t- by his face. No, on on Tawari's face. Uh, okay, yeah, you know, or Tawari playing the uh, playing the werewolf, because yeah, he's supposed to be thinking or working out the the case, but a lot of the times he had this look of like he was waiting for a bus or like he was kind of lost or he was looking at street signs, just that, that expression in his eyes. Like he wasn't really thinking about anything you think he would be thinking about. Um, just right. this kind of wide eyed, like, Oh, where am I? Is that, was that my stop? I don't know. <laughs> Which I think right. added this, this layer of absurdity to it because normally in these kinds of movies, you've got the hard boiled detective, they got the, the furrowed brow and they've got the narration going over everything. Right. Um, you're like, Oh man, I'm, I'm inside this guy's head. Whereas we get inside his head when he's actually speaking to the camera, Into, when he's just alone right. with his thoughts, we're like, I don't even know if he's thinking about the case or just like, where's he going to get lunch? <laughs> <laughs> or he's like sleepwalking or something, you know, yeah. like, but, but these are like long walks at night, you know, I'm like, well, I'm, I, I got to the point where I was, I was thinking, I wonder what kind of shoes he's wearing, you know, <laughs> but, uh, tap shoes. Um, yep, so, yep. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the one thing I thought would be kind of perfect and disappointing at the same time <laughs> is if that little line about there being a sequel uh, was a gag and there's not a plan to be a sequel. <laughs> you know, you never know. I mean, this, like I said, this is like, like we're saying, it's a very indie film. And, you know, if you don't have some type of uh, funding or whatever, I mean, it's kind of hard to get it done. But, um, I, I will give the film uh credit for not really um i guess relying on any type of like tropes that you would expect in a movie about a werewolf ninja philosopher um <laughs> I, you know i guess what i mean you know, that is tired like, old genre is yeah, what yeah, yeah. right i guess what i mean is like we never hear the guy go oh 
or or like he's not he's not ever like looking out at the moon on a Brooklyn bridge, you know. Um, we never, you know, with a movie, with a werewolf movie, you expect to see somebody turn. Well, he's already there, you know. It's like so. It's like he, he's never going to revert back to like human form. He's he's a werewolf. This is just it, and it it is funny how like he does kind of bed a couple of you know women in this movie and. Oh, it, it's funny because each time all we really see is them going down off screen, and we just hear these like moans, like "Oh, wow!" You know. <laughs> and then there's the one line that is uh, that again. There's there's so many lines and moments in this movie that really set my mind off into different directions while I was you know waiting for the walking to stop. Uh, right. But I did have a lot to chew on. One one line in particular, one of the characters. You know, when they're off screen getting ready to make love, she says, Is that what I think it is? I'm or like, is that what is that what it looks like or something? Yeah, something, something like, like that. I'm like, No, I, I don't know what that means. What 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 is that? <laughs> I, but but I like his re- but I like his response. He said, Yes, that is what it looks like. <laughs> totally like straight, deadpan, like yeah. He's a, he's almost like, you know, dropped from another dimension or something. So Yeah. He's a cool yes. character. I would love to hang out with him. I wouldn't even be afraid to th- bite me or something. You know. I, I, it sounds like you might be hanging out with him, so I look forward to your conversation. Uh, well, yes. Uh, knock on wood or wolf's bane, but uh, more, more information to be announced very soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that is Werewolf Ninja <laughs> Philosopher. The surprise uh, again, hit of the summer. <laughs> it's it's going to be bigger than Endgame. Uh, no, I, so it's, yeah, it's opening at, uh, at facets and, uh, I'll have some more information on, on how to get tickets and all that stuff in the, uh, the intro, cause I don't have it at my disposal right now. I'm horribly unprepared, but it's also late. Uh, yeah. so with that, um, I think I'm going to let you go and stop running off the mouth and, uh, yeah, thanks again. Yeah. And thank you. I know you weren't the, the biggest fan of this movie, but I think I might be the biggest fan of this movie, so thank you for turning me on to it. Yeah, you might have turned me around a little bit, but I enjoyed talking about it because it is, it's not like I hated the movie. It's just that it's, uh, I'm still not quite sure how I feel about it, and uh, I, was, I was definitely uh, you know, intrigued by it, and I, I respect it a lot, and it's nice to see a movie like this compared to the same old stuff. So... Um, it, it's cool that a movie like this is made and that it's out there and that it's, it's something very different and unique for people to see, especially I know that there's, you know, uh, one particular indie filmmaker, local indie filmmaker, uh, Nick Alonzo is going to go check it out at Facets. And I think this would definitely be up his alley. And so it's, it's kind of cool for other indie filmmakers to, to check this out and, and see what it's all about. It's, um, yeah, it might, uh, it, it takes some acclimating, but, you know, look at the title. Well, I, I'm happy to say that even though there's no transformation in the movie, it appears we've got a transformation, at least a minor one, on this podcast. So, <laughs> awesome. Great news. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, my, my battery is running low on my phone. I just got the little pop-up, 20%. Uh, so, I think we're going to end it here. I got to go. There's, there's a full moon and it gets a little, little crazy out there. Well, tell whoever it is to pull up their damn pants. All right, man, have yourself a great night, and we'll talk soon. All right.